We welcome you to the unveiling of a historical mar marker in honor of Obadiah Norman, who once owned the land on which we are standing. Every community has its history, but few relative to the over 19,000 communities around the United States can claim a role in the war for independence, unlike what we now call East Brunswick. So to start off with, let's honor our nation with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner by students from East Brunswick High School. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. The project to honor Obadiah Norman was spearheaded by Ann Alvarez, one of our historians for the, for the East Brunswick Historical Society. While doing research for a book on the old Smith Apple Farm, located here, where we are now, Ann came across Obadiah's name on an old deed that predated the Smith Farm. As often happens in historical research, there is spin-off, and further investigation connected Obadiah Norman with earlier work by Anne on the so-called Battle of Bennis Island that took place in 1777 at the end of Schoolhouse Lane. Obadiah Norman was a soldier in the War for Independence, a New Jersey patriot, and an early settler of this land that became a part of East Brunswick. To tell us about Obadiah Norman and to give us a perspective of the effect of the Revolutionary War on the people in this area, please welcome Ann Alvarez. Obadiah Norman was only about 17 years old in January 1781 when he volunteered to fight in America's War of Independence. He joined soon after 1,500 American soldiers mutinied in Morristown because they were not given enough food to eat and had not been paid for almost a year. Obadiah knew that he too would suffer the same fate, but his desire to help his state at a time when mutiny weakened its defenses, overrode any thoughts that he had for his own comfort. The British were stationed in New York City during this period. When they heard of the mutiny, they sent their men onto Staten Island, which is closer to New Jersey, where they could watch and wait for a time when New Jersey appeared vulnerable enough to attack. The people of New Jersey were living under very disquieting times. Matters soon grew even worse. On March 1, 1781, General George Washington wrote New Jersey's Governor William Livingston to tell him that he had to withdraw a very considerable number of soldiers out of New Jersey. Washington then ad added in his letter, in an almost placating way, that he ordered the New Jersey militia to make sure that all alarm signals and beacons were put in good working order so that the country could be quickly warned of an invasion of the enemy. Obadiah Norman was not among the soldiers that were withdrawn to fight in Washington's southern campaign. Obadiah stayed here throughout the war and guarded the home front. In March 1781, he was sent to guard the village of Spotswood possibly because Spotswood was situated along a road that the British might take during an invasion. Obadiah remained in Spotswood until the fall of 1781. The British continued to watch New Jersey during this period, but did not attack. Obadiah was next sent to stand watch on the Raritan River during the harsh winter of 1781-82. He was alternately stationed on the west bank of the river and on Bennett's Island. 
Bennett's Island is where Edgeboro Landfill is today. Back during the Revolutionary War, it was alternately used by both armies because its high ground afforded a clear and distant view of any enemy ships coming up the Raritan toward New Brunswick. On the night of January 4, 1782, 300 British sailed up the Raritan and raided the city of New Brunswick. They were chased out around daybreak by the New Jersey militia and the townspeople, but not before they looted two houses and burned the wheelboats of New Brunswick's resident privateer, Captain Adam Hillier. Since Obadiah was stationed as a guard there during this period, it is possible that he participated in this event in some way, but what he saw or did that night is lost to history. Years later, when Obadiah was applying for a war pension in 1832, he was asked what his duty was as a guard in the New Jersey militia. He proudly declared that his duty was to protect, quote, the defenseless families and property of his fellow citizens against the daily expectation of the arrival of the enemy, unquote. His words say a lot about Obadiah Norman. They reveal his courage in trying times and his strong sense of duty to his neighbors, his state, and his country. They also provide us with a perspective of how the people of this area must have felt back then in 1782 with the enemy practically at their doorstep. Now a little bit about uh, Obadiah as an early settler. Obadiah married about seven years after the war ended in 1790 and he and his wife Margaret settled here in the early 1800s. We are standing on only a piece of what used to be his land. He owned a lar much larger plot of land back then that basically went from Clear Road in that direction to Hart's Lane. This house, by the way, is not Obadiah's house. His house is gone. This house was built around 1879 by George Smith the Apple King, but that is another story. Obadiah Norman, like so many settlers of his time, eked out a living off his land. He had orchards filled with apples and peaches, grew vegetables and raised sheep and pigs. He also owned horses for plowing and transportation and a cow that produced milk for their many children. Obadiah and his wife Margaret had 10 children in all between 1791 and 1815. Unfortunately, life was hard back then and five out of his 10 children died before him. In Obadiah Diamond Norman's will of June 27, 1834, this dedicated father and grandfather expressed a desire to keep his family together forever by directing that a plot of ground in the southeast corner of his property not be sold, but be reserved for a family burial ground. Obadiah was buried there after he died on August 26, 1834, and he was followed at a later date by daughter Elizabeth. Others may also have been buried there either before or after him but this has not been confirmed. Obadiah Norman is being honored today for his dedicated service during the Revolutionary War. He is also being honored for the part that he played as an early settler in helping East Brunswick grow into the fine township that it is today. Thank you for all your work, including your research that led to a better understanding of the uh, role played by Obadiah Norman during the Revolution and his service that added to the history of East Brunswick. Now we call upon Mayor Cohn for remarks and the unveiling of the small but significant marker. Thank you. Thank you, Manny. Thank you, Ann. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. It's, I think, one of the beauties of this community is that we do recognize our history and what part people before us have played. And it only kind of casts light on how important it is the things that we do today because it's a ripple effect and it's going to have an effect on the future. So we're all sort of a point in time. And I think with science today, we've actually been able to appreciate that a lot more because with tools such as Ancestry.com and some of these other scientific methods of being able to trace your history, we could actually see in print exactly how tiny we are in comparison to our history. We just did mine family history and I got a part of my family dated back to 1800 in Lithuania. Uh, so I think it's amazing what we're able to do today, but it just shows how small each one of our lives are in the greater scheme of things. But at the same time, remembering people who had significant impact on us makes it all that more important. 
because we do have an effect and the little things that we do will you might not see the change right now but it will you know affect our ancestors and that makes it all that more important to appreciate these type of events and the type of history that we've been able to uncover and that history is part of what I believe is important as a town celebrating its culture its heritage uh, and and that's why we've spent such a enormous amount of time the last couple of years investing in uh, art uh, history the diversity of the town we have around us that's part of why we put together the arts coalition that's why kim is here today she represents that organization and its role in helping support all of those aspects of the town uh, and it's to, to, to me and people uh, who agree with the idea of promoting that it's what separates us i believe from many of the towns that are around us. Uh, we live in New Jersey. You just, one town merges right into another. You go from one, you don't even know you've left one, and you're in another town. So what really now separates us is gonna be the ability that we have to recognize our culture, our heritage, and to celebrate that, promote it, and to do everything that we can to pass that on to the next generation. That's what's gonna make us special and different and unique. And that's why I think something like this is all that more important. And I'm thrilled uh, to be part of this unveiling and the uh, continuation uh, of for those of us that support this, these type of works. So the plaque reads in memory of Obadiah Norm, Norman. Obadiah was a soldier in the Revolutionary War. In 1871 to 1872, he was stationed as a guard in Spotswood and on the Bennett's Island, where he stood ready to protect his fellow citizens, their families, and their property against the daily expectation of the arrival of the British. Obadiah was also an early settler of the land, later called the Smith Farm. He died in 1834 at the age of 68 and was buried in the family burial ground near Clare and Milltown Road. I want to thank you for all that history and for, you know, the, the landmark commemorating, obviously, a, a hero in East Brunswick history. We'll call upon one of our two remaining original members of the East Brunswick Historical Society to symbolically place flowers at the base of the marker. Not with us today is the original member Estelle Goldsmith, who now has trouble getting around, but who remains an active member. Estelle has contributed in many ways to East Brunswick. To place the flowers, we are pleased to call on original member Carmela Texter, who also has contributed in many ways to East Brunswick. Carmela? It's been a privilege to work with Estelle all these years. She's not only responsible for the establishment of this um, building and the East Brunswick Historical Society, but uh, also the first East Brunswick Museum. And it's, it's been a privilege to work with her and Anne and all the members and being part of East Brunswick's history and trying to contribute a little bit to our community. Thank you. Things are seldom done without the help of others. The Historical Society wishes to acknowledge those that played some role in this brief but important event. First, we thank Mayor Cohn for taking time from a busy schedule. As a matter of fact, he really had to squeeze us in to be here today, um, which says something about our mayor. He makes a point to living up to his commitments. He had said he would be here, and he bent every effort to do it. Um, we very much appreciate Anne's work on the project and thank her for doing the research and most of the planning for the unveiling. She did most of the work on this. Uh, we also acknowledge Kim and the Arts Council for financial support, uh, something that's going on now in East Brunswick where the Arts Coalition is uh, raising money from businesses, et cetera, to help support some of the programs. 
And uh, of course, we thank Michelle DeGrassi and the students from the high school for their wonderful singing of our national anthem. Uh, finally, we want to express our appreciation to East Brunswick Police Department for their uh, expeditious help in putting up the marker. Uh, it would have been a bill; of it would have cost us a lot of money to do it, or a lot of work. And he was able to do it for us uh, through his staff. So we appreciate that. Last but not least, um, we thank you all for coming. Good afternoon, all.